What's going on, nation? Erica and I have something really cool and different for you guys today. Well, at the Olympia this year, we had the chance to meet up with the team over at MuscleJeans.com. And after they explained to us how what's inside this kit can help take our training and nutrition to the next level, we were hooked. And you guys know that Scott and I are all about the science. So when we looked at the team of people behind this product, we were just blown away. Their CEO is a medical doctor, former fitness trainer, author. They also have a world-renowned sports nutrition and supplement expert and two doctor geneticists. So pretty impressive, right, babe? Oh, yeah. Really impressive. Exactly. So what they do exactly is they collect your DNA and they analyze your gene sequence for traits such as how you burn fat, your metabolism, speed, strength, power. So we are really excited to try this out. Now, babe, tell them a little bit about exactly what's in the kit. Yeah, so as Erica said, they analyze your gene sequence by taking a sample. So this kit isn't filled with magic pills. It has this inside of it. And what this is, is a swab, and you're gonna run it along the inside of your mouth and then send your swab sample to musclegenes.com so they can analyze your gene sequence to tell you exactly what you should be doing to maximize your supplementation, your diet, as well as your workouts. They actually did a study where they took the DNA from the top 10 runners in the world, or some of the top runners in the world, and then compared their genes with your average person, and they found that there was one specific gene that the runners had that was the reason why they were able to run so fast. I personally do not have this gene, and I'm really sure Erica doesn't have this gene. <laughs> her daughter might, her daughter's pretty fast, we'll have to swab sample her too. But there are, there is a genetic makeup, obviously you guys know this, and by knowing what your genetic makeup is, it's going to allow you to really tailor your training and nutrition to maximize your results. So Erica and I would like to take you guys through the entire process, we're going to do each other's swab samples, and then what they're going to do is send us back a Word document that's like 7,000 and 8,000 words long. So we're not going to read that to you verbatim. <laughs> we're going to analyze it and then give you guys our results. So I'm pretty anxious to see what my genetic makeup's like. What about you, sweetie? Same here. I'm so excited. So let's get started. Swab time. <laughs> so Erica and I just got done reading the directions and you want to make sure you take your swab out and you don't let it touch anything besides the inside of your cheeks. And you want to make sure that you rub both sides of your cheeks for at least one minute to make sure you collect enough cells for the analysis. And you also want to make sure that you're not just going up and down, that you're actually twisting the swab as you go up and down your cheeks so you cover the entire surface with cells. So we're going to set our timer for one minute and then get started. And then also make sure as soon as you're done, you package it and send it off because you only have about seven days before the cells start to deteriorate. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, go. <laughs> Timer done. Now we have to put it back inside the container. Careful not to touch anything again. I have a little bit of lipstick in there. <laughs> and we are ready to go. So Erica and I finally are ready to share with you guys the results of our Muscle Genes report. Now keep in mind, it's not going to take you guys nearly as long as us to get your gene results back. We've actually had ours back for a while, so that we've been traveling a lot. We were in London for two weeks, That's right. and then we came home. We had a ton of stuff to do, but now we're finally ready to share our Muscle Genes report with you guys. So Yes, and there's a lot of good information. So first of all, this is what the report looks like a lot of pages and a lot of information in here so it's probably going to take you a few passes at reading it to really digest everything that it's in here uh, but don't feel intimidated because it's actually very user friendly love the way they formatted the report they give you they separate the different genotypes and then they give you a little background on it so tell you what it means and exactly what it does and then they tell you your specific results and then they outline a strategy for you to address it or optimize it according to your goals. So, and for those of you guys who, who aren't familiar with genes or, or how any of this works, so basically you have a gene, so that's like the top layer, and then you have the genotypes, and that's what, that's what you're gonna find out you are. So, you know, we have the same gene, but our genotype might be different. Mm -hmm. And like Erica said, what's great about the report is it tells you what the gene is and what it means, and it gives a nice description, and then when it tells you your genotype, it gives you that description, 
And there's also an appendix in the back so that you guys don't get, con don't get confused over any of the wording that's in the report as well. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece that we like is that the report is very specific. You're not going to get all of this really broad information about what to do. We love the supplementation, for example. They give it down to you, down to the milligrams or the yeah. grams you should take per day. And time of day. Yeah. Fish oil or coconut oil, whatever it may be the case, it's very specific. And then the exercises same story they're gonna give you a strategy and they tell you the rep range they tell you how many sets you need to do to achieve your goals so we loved how specific the information was yeah and like you know when you guys get into bodybuilding where they're trying to train for a certain goal you know you'll find workouts that'll say you know do this do this do that the, with the muscle genes report it's telling you to do this and that but it's telling you also why you should be doing that based on your genotype so mm -hmm. With you know, with speaking of that, what Erica and I want to do is go over some of the top subjects that really impacted us as far as our training and our eating and our you know just our overall fitness life over the past couple of months since we've done these. And what we're also going to do is give a comparison so you guys can actually see how different some people are when it comes to training or eating a certain way. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to talk about every detail and all the information that's on the report because this video would be three days. So yeah. we're going to talk about the things that, that really matter to us that we were like, wow, this is pretty awesome. The first topic that Erica and I wanted to talk to you guys about was power and muscle fibers. Now for those of you who don't know, there's two different types of muscle fibers in your body. There's your slow twitch muscle fibers and your fast twitch muscle fibers. Now a basic breakdown of these is your slow twitch muscle fibers are ones that can contract many times in a row without fatiguing too quickly, but they don't really add a lot in terms of overall power and strength. However, your fast twitch muscle fibers, although they do fatigue much quicker than the slow twitch, they're the ones generally responsible for helping you build more power and muscle. And the proportion of fast twitch and slow twitch are really going to impact your fitness strategy. So if you're an endurance athlete, you want slow twitch fibers. If you are like us who are looking for muscle gain, uh, muscle mass increases, you really want to work towards increasing your proportion of fast twitch fibers. So in my case, my result said that I have an average proportion of both. Which is pretty awesome because mine is ma ba mainly slow twitch muscle fibers. <laughs> Which <laughs> explains why he's so good at endurance and he lasts for so long on his crazy workouts. Yeah, and you know, I, at first I was hoping that I would have more of the fast twitch muscle fibers, but like Erica said, you know, it kind of works in my benefits. And for those of you who have seen, you know, the videos where I do these intense circuits and you guys are like, how can you keep going through these things? It's just that slow twitch muscle fiber taking over. But, you know, the good thing about this report is now that Erica and I know exactly what we have as far as proportions of slow twitch versus fast twitch, based on the questionnaire that you fill out before you even get your gene test back, they give you recommendations. So mm -hmm. our recommendations were to build muscle. And so in our report, it tells you what our proportion is, and then it also tells you how you need to train in order to reach that goal. So I can try to build more fast twitch muscle fibers, which is actually a lot harder to do than the slow twitch, but it can be done. So let's talk about the second topic, which is training volume. People respond differently to different amounts of training volume. And in our case, the results were actually identical for this specific genotype. And we respond better to high volume, high repetition training. And what that basically is, is for us, what the report suggested is that we do 15 to 30 total working sets per body part. So obviously your bigger body parts close to the 30 range, like your chest or your back or your legs, and your smaller body parts, maybe like your biceps, triceps, shoulders, would be closer to the 15 working sets total. And it also says to include things like giant sets or drop sets or burn sets and super sets. And just to give you guys a quick breakdown, if you're doing one of my burn sets, which is basically where I do four sets in one, that still counts as four sets. But I know there's gonna be a lot of controversy over this because a lot of people out there, they claim the only way to get big and strong is by lifting heavy weight. And that just isn't the case for everyone. 
Absolutely. And in our case, uh, we experimenting with, we, we were experimenting with a lot of different techniques because you see all of the information available out there and you're constantly trying to look for the next thing. So in my case, I want to gain muscle. I was trying five by fives in all of my workouts and then looking at the report right now, I see that's absolutely not what I need to do according to my genetic makeup. And I was trying the five by fives too. And I'll tell you what nation, I was, I felt like I was my strongest and making my best gains when I was in my early twenties. And that's when I was doing the high volume stuff all the time. So when I read this report, it was like a light bulb went off and it's like, no wonder why I was my strongest and felt my best. Then I was doing high volume. So really key, important fact here, piece of information for you guys to know is how you should actually be training to maximize your results. That for me, just that was worth the price of admission. All right, so third topic, you ready, babe? I'm ready. All right, let's talk about insulin function. This is a very important one for me. Um, so a little bit of background on insulin. So all of us, when we eat carbs, we release insulin to control your blood sugar levels. Well, our reports revealed that our insulin function is actually below average. So what that means is when we eat carbs, we release more insulin than the average person. And that's normally a bad thing because when you have excess insulin, you either significantly decrease or completely stop fat burning in your body. Which was super surprising to me because my report basically said that I was, I have a hard time keeping off body fat. And looking back growing up, I mean, I was a skinny little dude my entire life. Well, so was I, but we were really You were young. a skinny little dude your entire I life? I was a skinny little girl. Well, you know, and it's a great thing to look at t this type kind of stuff because, you know, about six or seven months ago, I was following the if it fits your macros, eating whatever I felt like eating, just as long as it filled my protein, carbs, and fat. And I started to gain excess body fat around my torso, my lower back, because I was just eating junk carbs. I was eating a combination of junk carbs and good carbs because I was, if it fits your macros. Well, he loved, he loved bagels at night. Like that was his thing back then. Bagels at night, you know, you know, going out, maybe getting fast food. If we're, like we happened to be getting home late and I needed to, if I needed to fill my carbs at eight o'clock at night, we would get some fast food or something. Yeah, and go to Wendy's. Go to one. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't going to say it, but <laughs> <laughs> go to Wendy's. You know what I mean? And I was, I was, if it fits your macros. Well, as I started to put on excess body fat and one day Erica came behind me and she goes, sweetie, you're looking a little, uh, Thick on, and I'm like, no, you could not accept the fact I was so, that you had excess. I was, I was flexing extra hard just to try to make it seem <laughs> like it wasn't there, but it was. And so naturally, this is before we did the muscle genes test. Naturally, we started changing the carbs that we were eating and we started doing like, well, you know, I started to cook more. So yeah, she started to cook more. So mm -hmm. I'm eating way healthier carbs, doing like sweet potatoes, doing a lot of beans, a lot of really good vegetables mm -hmm. and things that are low on the glycemic index. And I started to take off this body fat and I wasn't eating carbs right before bed. I was eating bagels right before bed all the time, mm -hmm. just as a snack. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, we can tell the difference and you can go to Scott's videos from probably eight, nine months yeah, ago. Yeah, the, the proof the is there. Yeah, and tell the difference. So for us, the, the report proved it to us. So it actually recommended that we stay on a low carb, high protein diet and said very specifically that we have to eat low glycemic uh, carbohydrates su such as sweet potatoes because that's genetic. So there's no fighting that. That's genetic. It's something we cannot change. Yeah, and on the flip side, I'm sure you guys have realized this, if you're not the same of, uh, as us, if you're the opposite, it might not matter what you eat for carbs. Yeah, so you can you can go So eat you can go eat whatever you want. Cream. And I wish that was my case, but I actually knew from before that I did not handle carbs well at all and a lot of the information you see out there and i love to read and i do a lot of research sometimes it makes you think you're crazy because i'm like everybody's eating all of this delicious stuff and I, I just cannot get away with it and now i know exactly why and i was right i cannot get away with it so we're, we're basically if it fits your macros but on the low gi side <laughs> Now we're gonna talk about recovery. And in case you guys didn't know, people do have different levels of inflammation, muscle damage, and hormonal responses when it comes to working out. And depending on what those are, that can really impact your workout strategy. And in our case, the report revealed that we are actually complete polar opposites 
when it comes to recovery. So even though we're both high volume, that's our genetic report we talked about in the first topic that we have to train with high volume, the actual workouts will vary based on that polar opposite that we have. Yeah, Scott's eagle was a little hurt when was, he it wasn't, found out. It wasn't hurt, it was like destroyed. When he found <laughs> out that he is not good at all at recovery, he's actually below average when it comes to recovering from his workouts, right babe? Yeah, and you know, I actually started to really pick up on that and you know, if you guys are on the website or in the forums, there's a lot of talk about training twice a week and that's the only way to get big and I tried training twice a week and I tried doing certain muscle groups twice a week and all that really happened to me is I just started to become exhausted all the time. And I knew it wasn't overtraining because I didn't have any of those symptoms, but I was always tired. However, because my, my recovery is below average, I can still pick and choose certain muscle groups to train twice a week. It just recommends that I do a high volume day and then a heavy weight lifting day if I'm gonna be switching it up like that. Yeah, so, but overall, it recommended that you work out your muscle groups once, once a, week. a week. Yeah. So the only thing that I've been doing is I've been trying to increase the size of my traps. And so I have an actual day where I work my traps and on another day, like three days later or four days later, what I'll do is just superset that in between some of my other exercises during a different workout just to try to hit that area. Yeah, and then for me, it was the opposite. So I recover extremely well. So what they said was if I'm looking for growth, I actually should hit my muscle groups twice a week or even three times a week. And what they said was that my muscles are harder to damage, um, so I also need to keep switching my workouts, not completely, but each week start with a different, uh, a different exercise or do a different finisher, change the number of reps, change the order, always changing something up because I'm very adaptable. Yeah, and one thing I want you guys to take away from this as well is even though Erica's changing up her workout, she's still doing a high volume routine. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that when it's time to change your workout, you're supposed to completely change it to a totally different program. And if you know what your genetic results are and how your body responds to training, changing your workout could just mean that, just by changing the exercise order or introducing new exercises in, but staying within that high volume rep range if you're like Erica or myself. Topic number five, ability to lose fat. So some genes make it easier for you to gain weight or harder for you to lose weight. And in both our cases, again, we tested the same and we are susceptible to being overweight. Which once again, really surprised me because growing up, just like Erica, you know, I was a skinny dude like her. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the report outlines strategies for us to be able to gain muscle mass because remember our goal is to gain muscle so without really gaining excess fat so that much more important for us um, to work towards lean gains because we do have a harder time losing body fat genetically. And for those of you who do follow Scott Herman Fitness on a regular basis or even our posts on Facebook or Instagram for the last probably six or seven months, I've been talking all about lean gains. And I was even before we did the muscle genes testing. And what the report said, it gave recommendations on how to make those lean gains, is we should be doing hit cardio sessions two to three times a week, which is high intensity interval training. Mm -hmm. So basically you're doing like 25 minutes of cardio, 30 seconds walk jog, one minute sprint as fast as you can, 30 seconds walk jog, and you just keep repeating that for the 25 minutes. And it also recommended that we stay on a high protein, low carb diet. So just by taking these small variables into consideration, we've applied them to our workout schedule and our diet plan. We've already started to see results based on that. The sixth topic we're gonna to talk about is the ratio of fats for fuel. And this is actually gonna directly relate to the topic we just talked about because in both of our cases, we actually don't utilize fat as well for fuel as we do other sources. So for both of us, we have to make sure that we're regulating our fat intake because if we don't, it's just gonna be end up stored as you know, body fat inside the body. We're not gonna burn it. Yeah, so the strategy again here is the same, which is nice because it's in tune with the previous topic. So incorporating hit uh, into our workouts, high protein, low carb diet, so again, focusing on gaining mass, but with a minimum amount of fat as possible because we're gonna have a hard time burning it. 
And knowing this, I mean, there are diets out there that do recommend you go a lot higher in your fats. So if you're one of those people trying to figure out what diet works for you based on your goals, and you're like us where you don't really utilize fat as good as a, as a good fuel source, it's probably not the diet that you want to stick to. So the last topic that we want to talk to you guys about is testosterone response, which is a very important subject. And believe it or not, there are genes in your body that will regulate how much testosterone your body produces in response to resistance training. And we know that testosterone is the most anabolic hormone in your body. So completely critical for muscle gain. Yeah, and I was actually, this is one another one of those <laughs> ego smashers that I had. <laughs> because it basically said that my body is below average as far as testosterone response to resistance training. And for Erica, although the gene isn't really fully tested for females yet, it said that hers was excellent. So automatically I was jealous of her. I was like, why is yours better than mine? You know? <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> if, if there's a good story here is the fact that you do not need to have perfect genes and be blessed by God to be able to be fit. You know, we obviously are working with some shortcomings here. Yeah, right? exactly. And if you're willing to work hard and you want to, you know, stick with good foods and you want to exercise consistently, your genes do not determine the outcome. You really do. And we did a whole video on testosterone and how to optimize your T levels in your body. And so one of the recommendations for me in order to make sure I'm really maximizing my testosterone production was to make sure I'm getting a good amount of saturated fats in my diet. Obviously fat in general needs to be at a certain point because cholesterol is the main ingredient for testosterone. But since doing this report, Erica's really great and she told me to get some um, coconut oil. And so we went to Trader Joe's and got some coconut oil. and. She doesn't agree with me putting a teaspoon in there and just, you know, sucking it down that so way. Gross. She thinks it's wicked gross, but in my head I'm like tea production, tea production, tea production. You know, get that testosterone response. And the report actually <laughs> mentions coconut oil and tells you specifically how many grams you should be taking a day in yep. order to optimize your testosterone levels, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and it also it'll tell you what percent of your fat percent should be saturated as well. So it gives you a few options to work with. All right guys, so as we mentioned before, we are covering just some of the most impactful topics for us, but the report has so much more good information. You know, they talk about endurance performance. So if you're a runner, a cyclist, and that's obviously very important to you, they have information about that. They talk about blood flow, which we know is important for transporting uh, nutrients to your muscles and getting the pump when you work out. It talks about cortisol release. We know cortisol can have a big impact in muscle breakdown or fat accumulation as well. It even tells you the best time of the day for you to exercise according to your genetic type. How cool is that? It is pretty cool. And keep in mind, they're always coming out with new genes that they're discovering and what they actually mean. So as you guys do your reports, I mean, they're gonna just be getting full of more and more information as they're doing more testing and testing, they're testing people all the time. So they're always figuring out new stuff. I mean, it's very high tech scientific stuff. Mm -hmm. And obviously all of this information made us really sit down and reevaluate our nutrition, our workout plan, and you really had some significant revelations, you know. What was big for you, babe, as far as the report goes? Well, before I get into that, you guys need to understand that this gene report, it's based on if you've never exercised in your okay. life, okay? So even though you guys have heard what our genetic type is, because we've been exercising for the better portion of our lives, we've improved on a lot of these things. I mean, obviously, I mean, the biggest revelation for me is after reading this report, it kind of came across to me that I was supposed to be like a, an overweight, you know, hard to exercise, you know, dude. Like I just was supposed to not look the way I look. And he thought his jeans <laughs> were going to be like this God perfect makeup. He actually joked <laughs> with Dan, the CEO, saying that he was going to be a mutation. <laughs> My report comes back and it's like, no, actually you have some of the worst genes to work with. <laughs> Um, but it's actually we're surprised, inspirational. We're surprised that you're actually alive. But the revelation is, is even though I have a hard time with recovery, and even though my testosterone response to exercise might be lower than average, and even though I'm more susceptible to, to put on body or hold body fat, 
you know, based on a certain way of eating and whatnot, everything we talked about, I was definitely obviously able to overcome all of those things mm -hmm. by training extremely hard. I was able to put on muscle. I am very lean. I am pretty strong, even though I have, you know, more slow twitch muscle fibers and fast twitch muscle fibers. In, in realizing that, it just goes to show you that you can accomplish anything. It's possible for you to beat your genetics and reach your goal. Um, for me, you know, before we did this gene test, I was starting to get a little frustrated with my own workouts. And like Eric and I talked about, you know, we were trying different things. And, you know, obviously, uh, as, um, as a, I teach fitness on YouTube, obviously, as you guys know, so part of my job is to go out there and try different types of work, workout routines and to learn new things so I can teach you guys. And even though I know that my body doesn't respond to things other than high volume, I get the best results from high volume, I'm still gonna explore other options to learn to teach you guys. But as far as my workout's concerned, I'm always gonna stick to the high volume. I'm going back to what I knew already worked like five years ago. <laughs> and that was the biggest revelation for me. It was just like, man, I wish I just stuck to what I knew and I didn't listen to all those dudes who were saying, you wanna get big, you gotta lift big. Well, guess what? It ain't the case for me. <laughs> what about you, sweetie? Um, my biggest revelations were, again, the volume as well. That was huge for me. That was something I did not normally do. I was really focused on lifting heavy, like Scott said. I thought, for me to grow, for those glutes to grow, I gotta lift heavy. And it's not the case for me. So that was very valuable information. And then the other piece... Well, let's... Let's just clarify. I mean, you're still lifting I mean, pretty I was, heavy. You're gonna challenge yourself. You're challenging right? yourself. Right, right. On those high volumes. But your 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 rep range is gonna be higher. You're not doing six to eight reps. You're doing twelve to fifteen mm -hmm. reps. So it's still gonna be heavy, but obviously not as heavy if you're doing six to eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In my case, I was doing five by fives, and that's that couldn't be any more different yeah. than you know high volume workouts. So huge impact. I for mean, me. and before we we end this and go over the last few things, and, and I just this is something I, I just thought of. My, my stuff. I know, but I just wanted to say like the revelation with the high volume training. When we were doing the five by fives, I would literally do a set of five reps, stop, rest. Do a set of five reps, stop, rest, and I I would just sit there and be like. Like just kind of wondering when when's it gonna kick in? When's the pump gonna kick in? Or when is that feeling of my muscles getting worked gonna kick in? And it just doesn't for me. It only really kicks in when I'm doing the burn sets, drop sets, supersets, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what I'm doing now. What I've been doing for the past couple of weeks after coming back from all the trips. The other piece for me was was the insulin function. You know that that was something like I said I already suspected but I thought I was crazy you know you see all of these fads and all of these different diets and everybody that's talking about and it's so cool right now to eat pop tarts you know and post pictures of all of this crazy stuff you're eating and you look amazing and you know what if I eat that stuff I do not look amazing and to me it made me realize that I am not crazy that's really how I am I, I have to deal <laughs> with it you know and then the other piece working out the same muscle group two to three times a week. So, you know, I really care about my legs and I really care about glutes and knowing that I should be hitting these, you know, these areas two to three times a week. Again, very, very valuable information. And then we had to adjust our workouts as a couple too because we did identical workouts. And don't get me wrong, I've gotten the best results since I started working out with Scott and doing his exact workouts. But now knowing that genetically we're different, we had to change things around because he's supposed to hit it once a week and I'm doing two to three times a week the same muscle group. So very, very good information. And we still do work out together. We just kind of plan our exercises around the mm -hmm. same areas. Mm -hmm. You know, couples that work out, couples. Couples that work out <laughs> together stay together. You guys heard the term. <laughs> and if you are in a couple or if you have friends that you know their genetics are a bit different, you guys can still work out together. Just change the workout strategy. If you're a high volume guy, be a high volume guy. If your friend is heavy weights, just add more weight when it's time for his set, then take him off and do your set, you know? Mm -hmm. As simple as that. Absolutely. And so obviously I know a lot of you guys are probably interested in muscle genes. You wanna try it, you wanna get your genetic reports out. The website is musclegenes.com. You guys can go there and check it out. We'll have links in the info section below. And the gene report itself, um, it's about 199 pounds, about $350 US. That's and the cost for the test. That's the cost for the test. 
But if you guys go to the website and you sign up for the emailer, I mean, they have promotions running all the time where they give discounts on the test or buy two, get one free or, you know, things along those lines. So if you have some friends that are interested in doing this and I mean, just wait for one of those promotions to come out if you can't afford to do it on your own now. But if you, even if you can't afford to do it in general, take the information that you're learning here and apply that to yourself. I mean, like we said it earlier, I kind of already knew a lot of stuff that this report said for me to do. Like I kind of already knew that my body responded better to high volume training and it respond and because we switched our diet around, I just I kind of already knew that a high protein diet works best for me because I had been doing those things before we did the report. But what the report did for us, it just eliminated that what if factor. Yeah, we are doing with conviction now. We know that this is what works. No need in our personal workouts to be testing anything else. Yeah, and there's, and sweet, there's a lot of misinformation out there and we see it all the time. And there's a lot of really, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I don't want to say bad trainers, but there are bad trainers out there who just like there's bad anything. There's bad anything, and you know they'll they'll tell you to do basically what they're doing, and they have a script, and every single client gets the same meal plan and the same workout routine, and it doesn't work for everyone. Mm -hmm. So if you want to eliminate doubt, get your muscle genes report done. Mm -hmm. If but you, if you don't, like yeah. Scott said learn your body you know if you're not going to do your report but do it right and do it in a systematic approach so if you're going to do heavy weights five by fives then do that for like six weeks strict consistent evaluate the results then you switch to high volume do that for another six weeks evaluate and compare results you need to learn yourself and you need to see same thing with uh, nutrition evaluate how your body responds and handles everything that you're feeding it and know you're not crazy your body will tell you the story yeah, exactly, sweetie, <laughs> exactly right. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed you know, hanging out with us and going over our gene report. If you have any questions, you could obviously leave a comment in the comment section below, but if you wanna have a more in-depth discussion about this or get answers quicker to your questions, join us in the forums. I'll put a link right here. You guys can just click this right here, this bar, and that'll bring you to the forum section of scottherbanfitness.com. They're absolutely free to use, and it just makes life so much easier for me to get in there and answer your questions. And you know, there's already a lot of community members in there as well, so you'll be able to get that one-on-one -on -one action that you need in order to reach your goals. So That's right, get in there. Get on those muscle jeans. <laughs> as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys. See ya.